Hello and welcome to our analysis of ICAT 16. So as you know ICAT 16 marks the second part of our All India National Level Full Length Mock Test Series for CAT. You would have already taken 15 out of our 25 mocks so far and would have got a much better idea of where you stand in terms of your performance in English, Maths and DILR. These last 10 mocks have a combination of varying difficulty levels per section to help you adjust to any combination of difficulties and styles that you might encounter in the actual CAT. So let's have a very quick look at what ICAT 16 entailed for you. Before we go into the difficulty level of the exam, let me explain a term called LOD to you. We assign a difficulty level of 1, 2 or 3 to each question ranging from easy to difficult and that is then defined at the question, section and test level. So, ICAT 16 was classified as a moderately difficult mock with an average LOD of 1.95 which means it's close to 2. So, broadly you can say each question in this mock was moderately difficult. Of course, that's never the case but that's for the overall mock. What should have been the number of good attempts for this mock? That is something we'll come towards the end of the session. Let's start with the first session that's verbal ability. As you know, it always has 34 questions for, an, for one hour. Here it was classified again as a moderately difficult section with an average LOD close to 1.9 or 2. So here the LOD was very similar to the overall paper LOD. Again, if I were to benchmark this to CAT, then this is more or less similar to what you would face in the actual exam. So if you were taking the verbal section of this exam, it would be a lot on the lines of what you could expect in the actual test. As always, this section had six RCs in a combination of two six question RCs and four three question RCs plus the 10 numerical entry or theta questions. Let's start with the RCs first. If you observe, these six RCs had a broad spectrum of difficulty ranging from easy all the way to moderate to tough RC. So there was an RC of nearly each type as far as the difficulty range spectrum was concerned. Which were the RCs that you should have attempted? There were two longish six question RCs more relevant to European history and European arts. One was on Vincent Van Gogh and one was on World War I. Both of these were moderate. So you could have taken a choice of any one of these based on your interest and the questions that you found comfortable and tried it. Per se, the easiest RC of this set or of this test really was a three question RC on surfing as a sport. That was something that you should have definitely attempted. Similarly, there was another three question RC on current economic models, which was the first RC of the paper. That is again something which you could have tried. Then there were the remaining two RCs, one on arts as a subject for business people. This was slightly moderate or moderate to tough, so that could have been left to your discretion. And then there was an RC on Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. This is something that you should have skipped because this was the toughest RC of the whole lot. In general, how many should you have attempted? The two easier three question RCs and at least one of the two moderate longer six question RCs. Of course, if you could have done both the six question RCs, great. That would have straight away given you close to 15, 16 attempts. And that is what I would have tried in the exam. So I would have tried to do four RCs in this mock. Now coming to the numerical entry or theta questions. It had all the usual suspects, para jumbles, para summary and contextual odd man out. Unfortunately for you, even though there was no negative marking, these were all either moderately difficult or tough. So you couldn't really bank on these questions to give you a lot of marks except as flukes or if you were very sure. So here I would have looked at only one or two very serious attempts for an average student. On the whole, what would be a good performance for this section? It would be 
around 14 to 15 questions in the RC and one, two or probably three questions on a very serious note in the theta or numerical entry questions. 17 attempts would be a good performance as far as this section is concerned. Let's now look at the section that people fear the most, that's the DILR section. Typically toughest within the exam, toughest year as well. How was the section year? Here the average difficulty level was 2.22, so close to 2.2, again very similar to what you would face in the actual exam. So broadly, this was again a section that replicated the actual exam scenario. Typically we tell people to try and identify 4 to 5 sets that you can solve in the exam. So 16 to 20 questions is what we really recommend. In a slightly tougher paper, 14-15 is again manageable. So the first task here in any DILR mock or sectional that you attempt is to identify the top 3 or 4 sets that you need to attempt. Which were those sets? There was one set on pie charts related to scoring on different regions of a cricket field. This was something that should definitely have been attempted. It was a very easy set, calculation based, with the base, uh, with the help of the calculator that you have, this is something that should definitely have been done. Then there was one set on 12 students in 3 different classes, 10, 11, 12. This was again something that you should have attempted because it was one of those typical sets where if you got the answer or you made the final table, you would have been able to answer everything. A third set which should have been attempted was the one where you had a missing table on water purifiers. This was again any missing table set typically if you should look at the questions and if they are not conditional, you know that the table is more or less going to get fit and try and solve that set. So these three were definitely the sets that you should have attempted in this mock. Apart from this, there were two or three other sets which were either tough or tricky but doable. So I have classified them separately so that you know that yes, these were tough or time consuming. But if you couldn't do the first three, then these were the ones that you could have tried as backups. So which were these? There was one set which looked very tricky. It was on presentation of management papers in a college. Essentially, it was a Venn diagram based set. To be very honest, when you look at the solution of this set, you will realize that it was a very easy set. But it looked very complicated because it was a caselet with a longish table. Broadly, it was a pure pure Venn diagram set theory based set. Had you done it, you would have got full marks for it. Similarly, there was a set on a two stage cricket tournament. So you had to make one table to fill up the points for all teams and then carry forward them and uh, fill it up for the next stage. So yes, this was a very time consuming set but could have been a good backup had you been unable to understand the other sets. Similarly, there was one set which was conditional based on a rugby team which was a pure logical condition set. This could have been very easy for somebody with good grasp of logical conditions. For somebody struggling in this chapter, you should have left this set. On the whole, you could have attempted four sets easily in terms of difficulty, 5 was possible, but you wouldn't have been able to complete that in 1 hour. So 4 sets would have been a good performance. That's 16 questions. Finally, let's move to the quant section, which is typically the easiest section of the exam. Again here, it was the easiest of the entire exam with an average difficulty of 1.7. In the exam, you will probably get a difficulty of around 1.75 or 1.8. So this was slightly simpler compared to the exam. So on the whole, if you look, the entire paper was more or less on the lines of what you would face in the exam. Well, in quant, I always keep telling students that you will get 10 to 12 easy questions. Now, when I give you a list of questions saying that these were the must attempt questions, they are not necessarily all the easiest questions. They are a combination of easy, very easy and some slightly tougher than easy questions. But yes, these would have been easier to solve as far as the exam scenario is concerned where there were no tricks involved at least in the concept so if you look at this particular paper there was a very def definite trend emerging 
and I always tell students to look out for chunks of easy questions in the mock. If you look at the sets here, the first 15-20 questions from 60, question number 66 to 80 had hardly three easy questions. Which means that if you went to uh, solve it in sequential order, you would have lost a lot of time and maybe confidence as well. Whereas if I look from question number 80 to question number 90, I can easily spot six questions. And from question 90 to 100, I can spot another six questions. So the last 21 questions or the last 20 questions had 12 to 13 questions that should definitely have been attempted. So if you see the entire paper is skewed towards the second half of the quant section where the easy questions are bunched up there rather than in the first half. In a paper based test like a ZAT or uh, you know the old ZAT or the current IFT, you might be able to spot the easy questions easily because you have to turn the pages. Here you have to click and go to the next question. So always make it a habit to scan the entire paper or the entire section and then decide which questions to attempt. This particular section of this mock is an apt example of why you should scan the paper before trying to attempt the questions. Broadly, I could identify close to 15 questions which you should have definitely attempted. If I add 3 to 4 questions more which were on the easier side, you will get 19 attempts. On the whole, this paper was on the lines of the actual CAD with a moderate verbal section, tough DLR section and easy quant section. Overall, the number of good attempts for this mock would be between 52 and 54. Wish you all the very best for CAT. We will soon be back with the analysis for the next mock. Prepare well and you can subscribe to more videos of this type on our official channel. Thank you.